Hello and welcome to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Duncan. And like always, class is in session. Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Conkey's Outdoors, hunting and hound supply store. Find out more at conkeysoutdoors.com and Superior Hunting Lights. Superior, step up to the max. Use discount code CHU Podcast at checkout and receive 5% off on nighthunters.com. Welcome back to the Shine Time edition of Coon Hunting University. We got we got Mr. Chance Parker and Mr. Eddie Simmons here with us. So today we're gonna be discussing the last five episodes that we've released, which would be the three parts of the wipeout story. The interview of Mr. Sam, Mr. Jamie Davis with Superior Hunting Lights, and we're also going to talk about uh, Mr. the interview of Mr. Kevin Cable. But uh, before we do that, uh, y'all been on any good hunts besides turkey or white perch fishing? <laughs> no, I, I was fortunate to go to the Nationals, uh, 103 cast, and won one and got defeated in two, but uh, had a real good time, had an excellent time. Speaking of fishing, what uh what exactly went on uh yesterday? I just seen a truck in the water and I backed the truck in the water and then blamed it on Lakin, but I had to because the river was up, so had to launch off the road, had to wade up there and get the boat and put it back on the trailer. But she she was smiling that picture, but the whole time I was backing down. She's like, Oh my god, we're gonna try it. I'm thinking, I do this all the time, it ain't that big of a deal, you know? But uh It's a little bit bigger deal okay it's not just two of you anymore oh there we go yeah well that that's true too. hello but uh so I, i'd like to back up on that fishing trip too me and tyler we did go fishing uh we had high hopes for uh crappie uh we were crappie prepared but the only thing we didn't have was crappie i caught some perch and tyler caught a bass and we had a large time but uh the crappie did not show up no, you caught a bunch of brim. They caught about what, 15 perch, I think. I mean, Absolutely. You, you did good. I didn't do good at all. But uh, Watching that cork bobble. Watching that cork. That's what I'm talking about. We, uh, Me and Lakin fished all day yesterday. Went to Flint Creek in the morning. And then at about 1230, we come home. You know, about one, we come home. I still had a bunch of minutes left. I said, well, let's just go on to the river and go fishing, river swamp and go fishing. So we went from 3 o'clock to about 630 at the river fishing we didn't catch two fish all day she didn't catch none she didn't fish much either but uh I, I bet you didn't tell her what i told you every time i got hung up my buddy said if you're not getting hung up you're not catching fish no nah, she got hung up <laughs> i ain't yeah i ain't gonna we ain't gonna go there but uh so back to something that has to do with coon hunting even though we hadn't been doing much coon hunting uh did y'all did y'all see the new the collar tags that conkeys has now the new ones that they come out with, those things are pretty sweet. I have. I really like them. It goes on the bottom of the collar. I hadn't seen them in person. Seen them on the website. And uh, I'm going to get my buddy Tyler to do some ordering for me <laughs> to put on my Garmin collars. Yeah. Well, you you may accidentally know a pro stifer that may have a connection there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ed knows he ain't going to get nothing from Landon. And, uh, <laughs> congratulations to all the new pro staffers that were with Conkeys. That's awesome. Uh, somebody that we were mentioning, Landon Payro, got uh, got selected, and that's that's great. As a turkey hunter, I'm sure. Yeah, it wasn't as a coon hunter. <laughs> it was as a, 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 court, a courtmanship. That's all he does. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> another thing that we're going to be having today is uh, – we're going to be joined. We're going to have a special guest call in to the podcast here in just a minute. And that's going to be uh, Mr. Tim Atkins, Clark Canterbury, and Leah Atkins, who you'll you'll remember Tim and Leah. Leah's Tim's daughter that we interviewed them at the Mississippi State Hunt. Well, now they're wanting to put on this hunt in uh, Louisiana for their PKCU State Hunt. And it's going to be big. And we're going to have Tim and Clark come on here and uh, discuss that hunt with us and uh talk about it and maybe give y'all a good idea of what the Wiggins hunt was like too, from their perspective. You know, I think that that had a lot of influence on them 
wanting to put on their own hunt. So I think that's great. And uh, we'll ask Leah if she's excited about the hunt, and I'm sure she's she is for sure. They got the main ingredient. They got the want to. After talking to them, they have the want to, and they're excited. They're wanting to uh, put on a hunt about the kids and for the kids, and uh, they've hit the ground running. Not only that, it's, it sounds like they have the help, too. Absolutely. Um, and a sounds, good place. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like hunt. there's a lot of people involved, a lot of people to help out. And um, as you know, I mean, we couldn't do it. We we do it alone. Um, so I think they're off to a really good start. Yeah, I, I do, too. And I hope that other clubs can – uh take this as an example maybe and maybe other states can start promoting their youth hunts i know missouri does a good job i've noticed missouri's been really promoting theirs and uh you know i think it'd be great to see all of them really really out there and promoting them like these guys have promoted theirs i mean they really have worked i mean i mean it seems like so many day. people have bought in so quick i was looking at their list of prizes already i mean may the 28th and uh, these guys hadn't been working on this a, a long time, but now they have hit the ground running. They've done a lot in a short period of time. Absolutely. And um, so Lakin is taking the studio and making it a nursery. <laughs> that's great. I, I think we're going to get the walk-in closet in the bedroom. I think that's where she's moving us. Hey, we don't need much room. <laughs> I don't know where she's moving us, but she's moving us somewhere. She said, "Cause I, she said, well, I think we'll just take yours and make it the nursery." And I said, "Why can't we just take your office and make it the nursery?" Well, we compromised, and I think we're taking this this room and making it the nursery, this this spare bedroom. But uh, I don't know what we're gonna. You're do. just as much at fault as she is, so you better yeah. just go along with it. <laughs> that big oak tree out there, we may have a tent under it with an extension cord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, we'll be out there with the, the Vader or Bandit in the backyard out yeah. there. <laughs> uh, but and and that's another thing I want to talk about. Kind of a uh, everybody on Facebook that when I post that about Bandit and they uh everybody issued their prayers and their thoughts and I I really do appreciate that and it means a lot to me and you know mirror I'm not saying miracles don't happen but we're not looking for a miracle with him. Um, we know his time's very very limited. And it was very sudden, and it's a sad situation, and it's been pretty hard on me, and I know it's been hard on my wife. You know, she loved that dog like it was one of her kids. I mean, you know, we raised him from a puppy and uh, just hate to see that happen to him. But, you know, I mean, just move forward. and Got a new dog now, and, uh, you know, I'm, I miss him, missed him. I turned that other dog loose, and I was really missing Bandit that night, I'll tell you. Uh, but uh, I think it'll all work out in the end. I really do. Uh, I know it will, and – you know, we get attached to those dudes. You get something you raised from a baby like that. And uh, I was fortunate to be with you the night you got him qualified, I would say, when you won our cast out there. And he split treed and had his coon uh, at a very young age. And then I got to watch him do some more good work. And uh, you brought him from waddling around in the house to treeing coons pretty consistent and winning cast pretty consistent. So uh, you get attached to him. I understand. Yeah, you're right. You do, and uh, I think you you hunted with him about more than, as much as anybody besides Tyler. You know, but he hunted by himself a lot when I was. Yeah, it what? was amazing. Just like his mouth had got better, you know. To me, the last two months, uh, I guess he grew up because his mouth got stronger and his uh, tree style locate changed a little bit, but the power of his mouth increased. Well, and, and I knew something wasn't right about him when the the night before me and you got stuck, me and Billy Dwyer hunted him. I cut him loose, and he went in there, and he run a cone pretty good. I mean, he looked good on that cone, run 300 yards and treat him real quick. And then the next turn loose, he, he struck a track, and, I mean, he trailed this cone for, like, a mile, you know, just – but he never did that because either he was running the track or he was mud holing. You know, there wasn't really in, any in between with him. He either was running it or, or wasn't running it at all. So that was kind of weird to me because it didn't seem like a bad track. But then I, then the, the next nights when we got stuck, 
and he just stayed on the ground all night mm-hmm. till he finally just fell tree on that tree with a hole in it. I ain't gonna call it a den tree, it's a tree with a hole in it. But uh, you know, he ended up having the coon with the they trailed so far, and I'd never seen him trail a coon that far and have it. You know, I seen him run them that far, but you know, I kind of knew something was off then. And after he started swelling, you know, that's kind of when you know it all went downhill. But yeah, I mean, I knew something, something was wrong. So, but yeah, I mean, moving forward, you know, Tim, Tim's getting ready to call, and uh, so I'm about to give Tim a call, and uh, we'll get going with that. Chance looks like he's about to fall asleep over there. Just about there. <laughs> it's all them long nights of coon hunting. I'm telling you, I can up assure you, it's not that. It's a 19 month old and some uh, medicine they gave me. <laughs> I, I understand about the muscles hurting. I understand about that, uh, that rascal they call that sciatic nerve. Uh, that's not good. My buddies recommended me to go to a chiropractor up here in Wiggins. She was at Poplarville. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? What's up, Tyler? Hey, how's it going? So, uh, who do we have on the phone now? Well, we got myself, Tim Atkins. We got Clark Canterbury, and we got Leah Kate. Hey, <laughs> hey somebody's happy we're here. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're we're real excited, man. So, uh, <laughs> how's it going? Oh, things are going good, man. We're getting excited. Been planning, still been working on this hunt all day. Get, getting planned for it. Yeah, well, y'all have done a fantastic job, and so I have a chance, Mister Eddie, um, and me sitting here. And so, uh, if uh, if you would, Tim, you know, Mister Ed, do you want to you want to well, lead us off? Uh, first thing I'd want to say is uh, Tyler showed me that uh, video of Leah with that painting. Now that is excellent. I, that young lady is, I'm telling you, between winning coon hunts and bench shows and painting and promoting youth events, uh, she's special. Yes, sir. She uh, she wanted to be a part of it and help raise some money, and so she came up with that idea and uh, sat down and, and, and painted that out. So, Well, she's done a good job, and y'all have y'all jumped on it with all hands on deck. I'll tell you that. I've uh, got my wife to kind of pull up some of the stuff y'all have put on there and i mean it is awesome and the people y'all got helping you and clark i hadn't seen you since me and you walked about seven or eight miles in a two-hour cast about a month ago yes sir we did some walking that night <laughs> we sure did buddy we sure did but it was fun wasn't it it was it was really we had a good time i guarantee you so tim why don't you just uh tell us tell us what all y'all have planned for and the dates and everything just take it Yes, yeah, sure, man. Well, I'll tell you what really inspired us was you guys. I mean, y'all put on such a great hunt when we were there. You know, we walked away from that thinking, man, that's something, that's something we need to do and, and just put on something that the kids would love to come and be a part of. And, and so we started brainstorming it and, and thinking through it. And, you know, originally the date was going to be earlier, but we got it pushed back so we'd have more time to plan. And so uh, it's going to be May 27th and 28th. <clears throat> 28th is going to be the main day, the fun day, uh, state tournament that night. The 27th, we'll have a uh, just a $30 open hunt for anybody that wants to come and, you know, the youth that, that want to come and hunt that. <clears throat> and so, uh, but 28th will be the fun day that we're getting set up for. And, man, we're going to do, you know, similar to what you guys did, we're going to have um, we're gonna have the, the, the coon drag. We're going to have tree in contest, the bench show, coon squalling. And we've got some speakers coming in to talk. We've got a conservation officer that's going to come in and just share with the kids. And um, who was that? Who, who else do we have coming in that, that had won the, the the world championship as a youth? Uh, Scott Reynolds is going to come speak. He back in the gosh, it might have been even in the eighties, Mister Eddie. You might remember, but Scott Reynolds is coming in to speak to the youth about his experience winning the youth world hunt. Man, that is that is great. And uh, backing up a little bit, uh, I heard y'all got a, a cook that I've had the opportunity to eat some good jambalaya and stuff. He's cooked. You're talking about Brandon. Chad? No, I was talking about Brandon. Brandon said he was going to cook y'all some of that jambalaya is what he was planning on doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to try to. We've actually got a man here that's locally found out about it. He's a big squirrel hunter and stuff, and he's, he runs a crawfish business, so he's going to donate some boiled crawfish. 
And I think we're going to have boiled crawfish, jambalaya, and stuff like that to eat. Oh, my goodness. Now, y'all wasn't just supposed to come out the gate and outdo us. <laughs> I mean, that's I, a little much. It's, it's, it's going to be some good eating, I tell you now. I'm telling you. And uh, on y'all's uh, cast wins, uh, are y'all going to do the $100 uh, program? Everybody that wins a cast earns $100 both nights? Yes, sir. We're going we're gonna to do the same way. Uh, the, the cast winners Friday night and Saturday night will all earn $100, so they'll be qualified for the youth world if they want to go. Boy, that is great. That is fantastic. Uh, we we just hope you all well, and I'm not promising I'm coming, but there's a possibility me and my bride's coming. I don't know, and I've heard some of the other boys say that uh, they'd like to come too. So uh, I just believe it's going to be a great day. Uh, I think so. We're hoping so. We've had a lot of people just, well, we got several guys that <clears throat> are really putting in a lot of effort to help. And we've had a lot of donations come through. We got a lot of nice prizes coming in to give away. And I mean, we're excited about that. You know, anything that would just be a blessing to those kids and, and what, you know, we're pumped to be able to do it. So. Can you name some of the prizes that y'all are going to be lit, uh, giving away to you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So for the final four, um, we, we got a laser torch flamethrower. Uh, you know, light that's, that's going to be there. We got a Ruger 1022, or either the Ruger or Savage is going to be uh, 1022 in, in the final four. Then we got a dog box and then a dog tra tracking system. And the way the way we'll do that is, you know, whoever first is, <clears throat> they'll get to pick from those four which one they want. And then uh, second can pick what's from left, and, and then third and fourth. That's kind of way we're going to do those prizes. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. <clears throat> And, of course, we'll have stuff for all the contests, too. Um, you know, the squalling contest for the kitty group. We're going to give them goodie bags, similar to what you guys did. And then uh, the preteen and the teen age group for that, they'll get a jacket. or No, they're going to get uh, a $25 gift certificate to the on-site supplier, and then we'll give them a T-shirt. Um, and then for the coon drag and treeing contest, both those winners are going to get new lights. And then the bench show winners, uh, best male and best female, will get the embroidered embroidered jackets the way we're going to do that awesome are y'all going to uh do like us and uh when y'all give them those squallers y'all going to try to give them those squallers uh for the squalling event yes sir yes sir we ordered all the parts to make those squallers i appreciate y'all giving us the insight on that and uh we got the parts coming now and we're going to get those made so we can hand them out to all the kids you know what chance says don't give them those reads till about 10 minutes before the squalling contest right. <laughs> actually wait until they actually walk up to squall and that's when you hand the reads out hey tim uh chance while we were offline he told me he was gonna come judge the uh drag race for y'all <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hear you yeah i know y'all had some excitement with that drag race down there yeah yeah it's all Tyler's fault. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, it probably was, uh, you know, it is. It was Tyler Wable's fault. Uh, I mean, not Tyler no, Duncan, no, Tyler Wable. Like, negative. Uh, well, negative. I tell you one thing, uh, y'all will learn something new every time that I've shared with you. Uh, uh, the learning experience we had, we was all tired, and uh, the first thing one of our members said, "Hey." Next year, we're going to do breakfast. Said, I'm going to cook uh, sausage and biscuits. So we usually do just dinner and supper. But uh, one of the things on our improvement list is we're also going to do breakfast. Yes, sir. And we also got some uh, shirts made with the, you know, with the logo for our state hunt on there. That we're going to give, we're going to give T-shirts to all the kids that compete, uh, you know, in the hunt. So awesome. We got about two for them. And of course, we'll have leases. Man, we've had some really nice coolers that have been donated. Um, we have a, uh, a half day fishing trip with the tournament angler, Peyton. I go, I don't know if, how we're going to do that. If we're going to raffle that off yet or get that off as a prize. Uh, but there's been some really neat things coming in that I think people are going to enjoy and be proud to have. What, what's been cool to me is that, uh, we've had a lot of people that even people non-affiliated with PKC and stuff. I've had people call me that I've never met, never knew before. And like, Hey, we want to help. Uh, can I send some money? Can I send a, uh, some prizes. I'll go to some of the businesses I deal with and get them to sponsor stuff. And and these are people I've never never met before, never seen at a PKC hunt even. What but a they're, they're one of the kids because it's for the kids. Well, and I think that other clubs should take this as a model of what y'all have accomplished in in what a month. I mean, what it it ain't even been a month from when ours yeah. was no. when y'all had this idea. You know, I mean that's 
that's really insane. I mean, I mean, well, they had a pretty good example to go off of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, as far as to, I'm, I'm completely joking on that. I, that was a joke. <laughs> but just the the sheer the sheer amount of work has been leg work has been put in for this for just a month. I mean, impressed absolutely. Uh, that's all I can do. I mean, that's it's awesome because we're already learning from y'all, and I say that 100. percent seriously we are learning from y'all already and, and the main thing we want to know is the number to the crawfish guy <laughs> oh. i can get you that too <laughs> i'll tell you something i liked y'all doing my wife was showing me how that y'all asked who was coming and the response y'all have had in the pictures of those youngsters uh is that list grown and pictures grown since the last time i saw that uh, yes, sir. You know, on, on our event page, people can go and, and say whether they might be coming or whether they're coming. And, and yeah, I looked at it today and it's been growing some. And so, you know, it's good to have a little bit of foresight and foreknowledge, I guess, into who's coming. So uh, we'll put that on the list of things that we're going to copy and use from y'all, because I think that, of course, of course, uh, Tyler, our buddy Tyler, he's going to be in charge of that. Uh, uh, <laughs> him and Chance, they uh, they are our computer folks, so they'll uh, they'll use that information. Yes, Clark, sir. how y'all Clark, how y'all doing on uh, guides and judges? Uh, we're doing good. I, I've talked to several. Uh, I hope there there was a, a talk of a big hunt being put on the same weekend in Arkansas, and I'm hoping they change that date. We, we let them know about this because I, I told the guy I wanted to put the hunt on it. Look, I, I'm counting on everybody in Louisiana to be in Simsboro that weekend, so I'm hoping they change the date so that, that don't schedule that hunt for that weekend. But I've got a, I've talked to a lot of people, and I've had a lot of people, even from South Louisiana, contact me saying, hey, we'll come up and judge. You just let us know what we need to do. So I, I think we're going to be good. Well, that is great. That is great. And y'all's hunting, I know it's going to be pretty good. And, uh, man, that is good. We're looking forward to the results of that. And I was looking here at the gospel presentation. That's awesome. You know, and uh, it's a wore out story, but I I believe if one youngster learns one thing that will help them for the rest of their life, it's a, it's a major success, any event. You know, and the way I look at it is, I mean, this event's just an avenue to, to share the gospel. I mean, that's what God calls us to do. And, and everything we do, we're to honor and glorify him. And so, you know, if we can put on a great hunt that kids come come to and love, then I hope that makes God look good. Uh, and, and, you know, and then having a speaker there just to share the hope that comes with knowing um, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, we we definitely going to make that known. Amen to that, buddy. And having the conservation officer there, because uh, just like Mr. Steve, he's been involved with us for nine years. And uh, we talked a while back. There's no telling how many children's lives have been saved or how many people's passed on what they've learned about uh gun safety fishing safety boat safety you know it's 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 a good time for them and their parents to to hear the word of god and hear the word of uh safety yes sir yep Uh, a few things i think that people need to know for our hunt um with lodging uh, Hampton Inn in Ruston, Louisiana, they're pet friendly and they offer a, a discount for those who want to stay there that are coming to the hunt. Uh, that's Hampton Inn in Ruston. And then there's going to be camper hookups on site, like where we're, ha- where we're having our event at. People could come if they're going to bring a camper and park right there on site. Um, there's state parks. Uh, Claiborne is probably the closest state park, Lake Claiborne. They got, you know, cabins you can stay at. I want to say this, though. Uh, I checked on the state parks. Everyone for that weekend is booked. Really? Because it's Memorial uh, Day weekend. Real day. Yeah, yeah. Now they might have camper hookups, but the cabin rentals that were on those parks, they're all booked up already. So, wow. Okay. Uh, and then you got Creekwood Gardens. That's only about 10 miles out of town. Um, they got, I guess, it's similar to a cabin. Yeah, he has like four cabins and then he has RV hookups as well. Right. That people could say that's a nice place to stay. Uh, and so that's, you know, just thinking about lodging. And then, you know, our facility, it, it's basically a, a large covering outdoors. And so um, you need to bring a lawn chair if you're coming, you know, bring your own chairs to sit in. Uh, that's going to be important to have that there. So do y'all, do y'all have anything? Any no, more I, I just, no, I, I don't know. I guess it, uh, 
they've they've done an excellent job. I don't know how to say it anymore because I'm telling you, I'm impressed for what y'all have done, for the amount of time y'all have had to do it. Uh, uh, hats off. I mean, I and I, you know, people that are listening to this that <clears throat> have never dealt with the hunt like this. I don't know if they'll really understand. You know, I don't even really understand because I've only dealt with it one year. But I mean, man, that's a lot in just uh, not even a month. I mean, I, I, yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of work. And Bud, we got a good team together you know, that's helping out because it's, it's, it's a lot of things you don't think about, you know, that you got you to gotta get done to pull something off that's going to go well. And, you know, you can't tell how many clubs or representatives or people that's going to see what y'all do and go home and have a meeting and do the same thing. I mean, it's, it could, it could spread big, I mean, real big. Tim's a perfect example of coming, coming to Wiggins and then seeing it and then want it to do his own. I mean, so, I mean, you know, you're passing it on and I, I, I know that you're willing to do this. Anybody that's listening to this that would reach out to you, I know you'd be more than willing to help them, you know? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Anybody that's going to do it, they need some help. I'm here just like you guys have been for me. I, I'll pass on what I know. That's great. So you, you got anything else, Tim, you, you think we need to cover before we talk to Leah a little bit? Uh, I think that covers our hunt part of it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, reach out. Oh, and, and then if you want to know more about the hunt and see the prizes, go to our event page that we have on Facebook, you know, for the Louisiana State uh, Youth Hunt. And we'll try to keep that updated. You know, the most up-to-date with, with things we're going to have going on with times and, and prizes and things like that. And so just visit that page and and uh, and like it, and, and, and that'll keep you informed. And for somebody just uh, kind of like landmarks that don't know exactly where y'all at, Monroe, how far are y'all from uh, just give them a couple of locations to shoot from? Well, if you're, if you're coming down Interstate 20 from the east, from Monroe, your Simsboro is about 40 miles straight west down the interstate, just right on the interstate. If you're coming from the west, from Shreveport, we're 60 miles east of Shreveport. So we're right in the middle, north central Louisiana, right on Interstate 20. Man, great location. Yes, sir. And Ruston, right there, Ruston's kind of the neighboring town. Anything you want to, you know, if anybody needed to eat, which they shouldn't have to because we're going to have it, but food lodging every rustin has everything you need for whatever walmart's you know pharmacies all that kind of stuff so yeah but i would encourage you you know to reserve your room sooner than later i mean as clark mentioned you know it is memorial day weekend and so people will be traveling so if you're coming man you know, go ahead and get, get that locked down and is there a, is there a code or something that they need to tell the the hotel to be able to get that discount or do they just need to say hey i'm coming for this hunt yeah, all you need to do is just mention you're coming for the, uh, the Louisiana State Youth Coon Hunt, and and those guys are up. And that that was a great idea on y'all's part. Absolutely, it really was. I got that from y'all. I got that from y'all. So <laughs> I think Mr. Eddie told me to go ahead and try, try to lock down some places that would give discounts and that that are dog friendly. So thank you for that, Mr. Eddie. Oh yeah, buddy. Any way we can help y'all, but I'm telling you, uh, y'all have impressed us, and y'all y'all going to make us get our game, uh, get back on the court. I guarantee you. <laughs> we are proud for y'all and happy for y'all, and uh, I just expect big things. And you know, Tyler may take this out because it's like a wore out shirt. I say it all the time, and I can't help it. But don't get hung up on numbers. Don't get hung up on numbers. The ones y'all get. And it's going to be a good turnout. But the ones y'all get, y'all feed the ones y'all got. Don't count them. Just uh, share the gospel with them. Uh, Share a good time. Hope they'll have fun. Hope they'll meet a new friend, maybe a friend for life. And uh, as long as y'all keep that, uh, I believe you'll be good because I've experienced the other side of it. Uh, Worrying about numbers, that's no fun. Just uh, take care of what you got. That's a good word, Mr. Eddie. Good advice. Thanks, sir. Conkey's Outdoors knows that keeping up with the latest in hunting technology can be expensive. That's why they are proud to offer amazing financing options from 30 days, same as cash, to 0% interest for 6, 9, 12, and even 18 months, depending on your credit score and the amount you spend. If you've been eyeballing that new thermal or want to upgrade to the latest in tracking system technology, Go find out more on the web at conkeysoutdoors.com or if you're in the Hastings, Florida area, stop by and visit. 
They'd love to have you. Conkey's Outdoors, Houndsman, helping Houndsman. Speaking of uh, worn out shirts, uh, Mr. Eddie always says when you go into a hunt and you think you're going to win, you're going to need to buy a new shirt. I'm calling it right now. I think Leah's going to need to buy her a couple new shirts <laughs> for this hunt. All right. Uh, <coughs> we want to start calling her photo. I absolutely. Little uh, photo. <laughs> little photo. But uh, <coughs> Leah, are you excited for this hunt? Yes, sir. So, yes. Uh, so yeah. what, what gave you the idea to do that painting? I don't know. We'll talk about it. I mean, you told me you want to do it. Why? To raise more money for the hunt? Yeah, she'd been coming up to me talking about raising money, and and so she had the idea to do that, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how's Country Hot Shot doing? Good. Good, good. You going to be hunting Tilly in the hunt, huh? Mm-hmm. That's, That's good. the plan, huh? Hey, you stole the show during that, uh, little interview we did with you i had more people message me saying they really enjoyed that than the rest of the episode to be honest I mean, that people say man you couldn't interview her all day i said yeah i should have you know Let, let's hear one more one of them striking trees Too short? <laughs> <laughs> give Too me a, give me a tree i'll be quiet let me hear the tree <laughs> that's, that's what how, it's all about that's how she's doing i'm telling you she, she's a she's a handler I, I'm, so, so leah, so leah what, what are you most excited about for the hunt we got coming the up the train contest yeah the train contest why because i like to listen to all the dogs bark <laughs> hey uh you can't beat that man that's awesome and i i'm I love it. I really do. We could be speaking to the next uh, PKC Youth World Champion on here. You never can tell. Hey, you know what's funny? Or go ahead, Clark. What, you going to do go ahead. what she said a while yeah, ago. Go ahead. <laughs> we were talking a while ago over supper. Timmy had me over for supper, and we were talking about my kids. And my oldest son wants to be a doctor. And Timmy asked Leah, he said, Leah, what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, a coon hunter. <laughs> That's right. That's That'll awesome. work. And, you know, Clark, would you say in that, I, I think about that all the time when we have those uh, gatherings, just like the uh, youth coon squalling or any day events, uh, we're looking uh, maybe uh, school teachers, maybe firemen, maybe doctors, maybe nurses, uh, maybe pastors, uh, deacons. Uh, we just don't know what we're looking at out there with those youngsters and uh it's kind of uh, it is a blessing that they've they've passed through our life and uh you know uh that's a big deal we don't know who's going to be there at that hunt yes sir i, I totally agree with that you know you know and mr eddie i want to say this too like just being around you encouraged me by how much joy you got out of doing it and how much you, you loved um you know just the kids and I mean, i appreciate you know you just being authentic and and just you know, sharing that, that, that kindness and that love and allowing others to see it because, man, that inspired me as much uh, as anything. And so I appreciate, I appreciate that, Mr. Eddie. Well, we sure thank you because I'm telling you, I'm nothing special. Our whole team is like that. We, uh, we just love doing this event and being around kids. And uh, I'm telling you, once everybody buys in with, and I know there's more than you and Clark, but once uh, your team lets other people see what's going on, the team is going to become larger. It really is. And uh, it's just a, it's a good thing. Y'all have done all the hard work. I mean, really, everybody's <laughs> gonna, going to want to join now. You know, I mean, y'all have done all the hard stuff, you know. Now everybody's going to join and help y'all out. The start, no, yeah, the I, hardest. I guess we, we should mention uh, some of the guys. It's, when we kind of got this group together, uh, it started off as just mainly the ones of us that had kids that were old enough to be in this. But then some of the others joined in. But I just I want to mention Chad Bro, uh, Mr. Bollinger, uh, Derek Calk, uh, Robbie Durham, and Chad, Chad Frisbee. Frisbee and Will Langley. Yeah. That those plus me and Tim are really the ones that are kind of keeping the ball rolling and, and getting the sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. But they've been a big big part of doing this, not just me and Tim. Oh, absolutely. Sure. 
y'all y'all have got a great team. And you know, I want to I want to say something else. Me and Tyler, we done a interview with uh, Kevin Cable a while back, and Kevin made a statement about youth hunts, how he approaches the parents. Uh, you're not going to have any problem out of the youngsters, but every now and then a, a parent may want to get involved. And uh, Cable said what they tell the parents is this weekend is far and about the kids. And if next weekend y'all want to compete somewhere, you know, ease on over there and compete. But uh, this weekend we're going to have the kids competing and uh, train the kids before y'all get here, give them the advice, help them learn the dog, know the dog and be involved with the rules. You ain't got to be an expert, but it sure helps to know what the dog sounds like and know that's your dog and know it's struck or treed. But uh, getting back to what he said that uh, was this weekend's for the kids. Parents, you're not competing this weekend. You know, and it's pretty simple, but I, I think it's pretty good. Yes, sir. Well, Tim, I, uh, Leah, Clark, I appreciate y'all coming on here. Y'all got anything else or y'all good? I think that about covered it. All right, buddy. Well, uh, like I, everybody can go check y'all out on Facebook and we'll be mentioning it some more too, uh, of course, in the podcast, just to keep everybody up to date. So, uh, y'all be listening for it. We will. Enjoy talking you. to y'all. Enjoy talking yes, to y'all. We'll see y'all soon. Enjoyed it. Yes, sir. I All really right, did. Y'all. Thank y'all. All right. Bye. Bye. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wow. They're going to have a big hunt. They really have done a great job. Yep. They really have. Y'all want to start out with the wipeout store? S- suits me. Before Chance falls asleep. Um, Whichever one y'all want to start with, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, uh, wipeout's good. I mean, you can just take it in order that you done them. So we'll go part one of the wipeout story, or we can just combine them all together. We'll just combine them. So yeah, yeah. we'll go, we'll talk about the wipeout story first. Um, what'd y'all think? Mr. Eddie, you were there, so... We'll let Chance. Chance, what did you think to to start off with? What, what was your what was your feelings as a as a a listener? I guess you'd say. Well, I I, I was hoping to get to go on the trip, and um, I got a little bit of a behind the scenes editing version. I didn't get to hear all of it. That aggravated me, much <laughs> like everybody else. Um, I did not appreciate you not letting me listen to all of it um still don't i i'm i'm holding a grudge um but it it was awesome it 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 just kind of shed a light on what all those guys done what they accomplished to me i didn't realize that they had a hand in so many of them uh so many of the dogs it it, it was just truly amazing and and the impact that that they've made on coon hunting is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can find, I don't know what you would say compares to it. Uh, reproducing winners and winners that can reproduce, just kind of mind-boggling to me. And and it's still going on. There's some of the top winners right now are wipe out bred dogs. It's it's really crazy. I talked to Billy today and we was talking about old shifter as, as you was talking about winners that produced winners, you know, I may mess this up, but Billy can correct me. Uh, shifters out of threesome threesome was out of Zeb three. And then there comes, uh, Zeb again, Zeb again. And then, uh, moose moose and then Zeb and then coma. And that dog carries all those dogs right there in his bloodline. And, uh old pleasure that we like a lot down here and uh shifter have the same mama and uh so that was that dog billy's got carries all those bloodlines i talked to barry a couple days ago and uh he's still enjoying colt and said uh been breeding a few females and him and colt's getting a little better on the page together and i kind of think barry's enjoying himself i really do yeah i i really think that he he enjoyed it a lot i i you know, he was real skeptical about doing it, and he, he wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for you, Mr. Eddie. Uh, I don't think any of them would have. Bill, Billy might have. But Billy probably probably would have. I think he, he probably would, but the other two wouldn't have without you. Uh, 
And that's kind of what they told me. <laughs> but, you so, know, uh, I know it's true. Um, Barry, when he talked about, you know, some people said it'll work and some won't. But uh, I just was thinking about some of the uh, statements that was made. He bred the best female he could find to the bre- best male he could find. And that's how it started. And then he said, well, Coleman, his opinion, uh, was an outstanding dog. Candy was an outstanding dog. And said so it seemed like Zeb got the best of each one of those dogs. And he only had what, 61, 62 pups. And, uh, man, the legacy that dude has left behind. And just think about the legacy. If he wouldn't have passed away at such a young age, what he could have left behind. It's it, 60, 61 pups, correct? Yeah. 61, 61 pups. 61 pups and done what it did. It's just, uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, you really think about it. It, it they could have, when they made that cross, there's no way they could have said, "Hey, this is what's going to happen here." You know, it's going to change the face of coon hunting because it did. But Billy said when he seen Zeb as a little puppy, Zeb had a light shining on him. You know, the rest of the litter was there, but Zeb had like a halo around him, like a. So Billy, Billy knew, I guess, you know, you'd say he, he knew it was going to be special, but I don't think anybody could have thought he'd done what he'd done. I mean, even think about bone collector without Zeb, there's no bone collector. Sure. I mean, backwater pearl never happens, you know? And you know, that's amazing. We talked about it. Fergie still has some semen out of moose and Clayton, you know, and moose was out of Zeb's first litter. He said, that dude still got that. Uh, another thing that uh, I had forgot, you know, at one time, Barry had five platinum champions in his kennel at one time. He told us he was breeding between one and two females a day. Uh, it's a short list of people that's had five platinum champions plus a world champion, you know, in his pen. Uh, that, that's pretty serious. And uh, kind of like... Uh, Barry said uh, he's enjoying himself again. Uh, there's no telling where Barry's headed. I'll tell you another thing that I liked and appreciate is his willingness to sell all of them. <laughs> uh, he, he, you know, I mean, it, it just went on and on with selling, and I bought it back and got it back, and I sold it and I bought it back and got it back, you know. Um, a funny part to that, uh, Barry uh, makes a statement there. You know, he said, uh, yeah, the only one I never sold was old Zeb. Bitley said, what? He said, you even sold old Zeb. And he told him to who? And Barry said, hey, you're right about that. I did sell Zeb one time, but I got him back pretty quick. <laughs> he said, after yeah, that was after, that wasn't on the, on the podcast, that was afterwards. I, I yeah. said, was there any of them you didn't sell? And he said, I never sold Zeb. Barry, Billy said, you sold him twice. What are you talking about? <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, I did sell him. That's right. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. What, what was his saying? Uh, poor man's got poor ways yeah. is what Barry said. Uh, half of a hundred's better than none. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that Barry, he, he can come up with some stuff to say now. You know, and I thought about something else Barry said, and he wasn't bragging, but uh, he was talking about candy. He said she was a first and first type dog whether it was good or bad, he said, but several people had hunted with her. Some tried to buy her, some give their dogs away, and some got new dogs after hunting with her. Says she was just that kind of dog, you know, and I enjoyed hunting with Candy. And uh, she was definitely a, a bottle rocket. You know, she was, she, was a, she was pretty nice, pretty handy. And Billy, he told us that uh, all these years later, uh, he talked about her locate and that double chop. And I've heard that. And uh, there's dogs today in the Wipeout bloodline today that still carries that type of locate. I thought that was impressive. She's still showing up all those years later. Yeah, I agree. It, it's awesome. And when they told that story about Miss Ron and Nick and struck that dog. Oh, yeah. And couldn't get. Man, I, uh, that's one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. That <laughs> <laughs> Ron. Uh one of the things Barry said about old Zeb that caught my attention, he said, uh, the only reason Zeb treed was because the coon climbed. He said it no other reason would Zeb tree. And uh, Barry also said, you know, some people said old Zeb would mouth. 
And Barry said, no, he wasn't a mouther, he said, but he would run anything that had blood in it. He said that was what he would do and said uh, he would just cover so much ground. And uh, Ferg told a story there about uh, candy getting in a wad of dogs and uh, just treating the candy they'd been messing with. And then uh, I had saw Zeb do that same thing. I had shared that on the podcast that uh, the dogs we had, uh, they were kind of confused. Zeb been off running a critter, I'd say. Uh, and he shows back up, and it's not long. He's got a coon tree. That was impressive. So in that in that podcast, I was going to talk to you about this. Because you never told me either, because I never asked you. When... You remember when he said, was you at that hunt that night? And you said, I was judged. Yeah, that was the pro runoff hunt. What happened there? Oh, it was just a good hunt. Zeb just won it. and uh, Well, t- t- tell that story because, I mean, we, it, it was never told on the Yeah, podcast. well, we didn't have a real good hunt. We had only treed one or two coons, and uh, Zeb uh, did enough to win. It wasn't one of his uh, most impressive nights, but I can tell you this. Uh, sometimes Barry pulled uh, Zeb out, and sometimes Zeb pulled uh, Barry out, <laughs> and uh, they were a good team. And I'm going to say, uh, talking from memory, that was a night that uh, Barry pulled Zeb out. Uh, it was <laughs> it was fair and square, but uh, they were a heck of a team. That's a photo, wasn't it? Photo. I, I told Barry all the time, I said, I'm telling you, if they've got a camera at a hunt, uh, Barry's fixing to take a picture because that thing is, is a winner. When they were talking about the first time a panel had went in the woods with them, and and my, he said, "There's too many law men out here for me to strike his dog." <laughs> I said, "Barry, Barry Kitty just dug a hole in front of the panel. He turned a slick tree into a circle tree. <laughs> That's pretty good." Uh, but yeah, I wanted to ask you because I know he. Had, he said, uh, was you there that night? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember one I night. Was judging. Yeah, I judging. I judged that night. I remember one night me and uh, Barry drew each other, and I was hunting all night, and he was hunting Zeb. And we was in Louisville, Mississippi, and Mr. Buck Walters was our guide. And most people's thinking, they ain't got any hills in Louisville, Mississippi. Well, they're wrong. Mr. Buck Walters hunts in the hills. And I'm telling you, between all night and Zeb chasing deer separately, but they were doing a outstanding job and when they got through with that they started treating coons and i'm telling you mr buck almost killed me and barry but uh, best of my knowledge barry pulled out another cw and got a photo but uh <laughs> i remember that night too now while we were there didn't barry show you some blue dogs or something that went back some that you had owned uh i don't remember that i, I really don't I don't remember that. Or maybe it was Billy that was showing you that he Me had. and Billy talked about a blue dog. The first time I ever met Billy, uh, he carried his light over his shoulder and everything, and a one-eyed blue or something he was hunting when he was a kid. And uh, John Evans was hunting the national champion, and I was hunting something. I hope it was a good dog. And uh, Billy wore us out. And I thought, here's this youngster, barely can get off of here by himself. And he's done beat the national champion and me that's wanting to win something. <laughs> and uh, it was, I have never forgot that. It was, it was just, it was a great interview. It really was. And I, yeah, it blew up. I can tell you that. I mean, there was a bunch of people listening to that thing. Oh, you know, and uh, kind of like, uh, we talked there at the end that uh, Barry gave us an invite to come back, and I've never forgot about that. I'm kind of looking forward to one day if all the everything lines up that uh, you call me and tell me, hey, we're headed back to Tennessee because uh, there were so many people that they wish could have been there that wasn't there. And, uh, you know, how many times did he mention Clay? I mean, Clay is 100% of the wipeout story. And uh, – I'm kind of hoping one day we get to go back. And Barry said he's got a pretty big table and he's got some extra chairs. And I would love to go. You know, a couple things of that also is uh, when Barry talked about uh, the youngsters, you know, and he passed that word on to parents and grandparents that uh, if those kids want to go hunting, let them go. If they want to turn tumble salts and uh, kick cans and skip rocks, let them do all that as long as they're coon hunting with you. And uh, Barry kind of said he had made some mistakes with his. He was uh, too serious about it. And he said if he could do that over again, he would. 
and uh, he would do a little more enjoyment instead of being serious. And he kind of was wanting to be helpful to people that's got youngsters and tell them don't make the same mistakes he made. And also he talked about youngsters that want to learn. You know, there's a there's a time and place for everything. There's a time for fun, and then there's a time for learning, and a uh, time for those that can to teach. And um, Barry said he enjoyed teaching also for youngsters that wanted to learn. So as me and him were shooting a bull, I talked to him a couple of days ago. I said, you know, Barry, I said, man, y'all have got a big uh, – outstanding youth hunt up there but close to you now the uh lexington four-wheeler hunt i said but man there's nothing wrong with having two outstanding hunts at different times of the year i mean there's 11 more months available i said uh, i could see something uh right there you and these guys in adamsville putting together some kind of youth hunt uh just kind of memory of some of the good times we've all had and I mean, what a chance for kids to learn and be involved. And Barry said, well, you know, I, I'd i listen to what somebody said, said we might could put something together. He said, I just don't know if there's uh, much interest out there from people around here that would want to do that. So I guess on this podcast, if there's inter- anybody interested in trying to have another big hunt there for youth, uh, maybe contact Barry. You never can tell what could happen in Adamsville. Did he say anything about his willingness to help uh, middle-aged folks? <laughs> well, I tell yeah. you, I'm 63. I hadn't been in a cast with Barry in a long time, but he's helped me several times <laughs> to get memories uh, and uh, to understand the rules a little better. I've been on panels where I was listening to Barry, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this dude's good. <laughs> <laughs> Should have went to Harvard. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, he was what you call listening and paying attention. At all times. Barry is, uh, I'm old Betty's like that in life. I've never been around Barry much that we wasn't talking about dogs, but uh, I'm going to say he's a pretty serious person, you know, and that's the way he, he's always hit me. He enjoys life, but uh, he's either in or he's out. Yeah. And uh, so if anybody listening would think that it'd be a great idea to have some type of youth hunt up there in Tennessee and, you'd want to be involved in that and get to meet some of those guys. And, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, maybe something to do a wipeout, I'm sure, you know, uh, but you know, let them know or let me know and I can let them know however y'all want to do it. Uh, and see if we got any interest in that, you know, I mean, that's just, we're just putting that out there. It's a great, great thing. I think for the people sure. and, uh, everything I'm sure superior lights would probably do a couple lights for that. Sure. You know, I mean, uh, being they are in Adamsville, <laughs> you know, and, and just like, uh, I mean, uh, on the podcast we covered the, but there's Mike Creasy right there. Uh, you know, he won the first PKC youth world championship that was ever had. He won the PKC world championship, him and peanut won trucks with, uh, a wipeout dog. I mean, oh, Willie, uh, I'm satisfied, uh, they would be there, uh, uh, Mr. Tam Young, national champion, uh, Clay Young, world champion, part of the wipeout story. I mean, it would be a – I don't think having guest speakers and people to listen to would be a problem of gathering up. But it was just a thought. I think it would be awesome. I, I mean, you might could have a grown folks hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I just even, want to come listen. Yeah, me too. I mean – Man, it'd be like a live podcast they could do there. All of them just sit around and talk. Everybody just sit there and listen. You know, and I want to bring this up, too, before we move to the next subject is is I think it's crazy, and I haven't told Barry or Billy or none of them this as far as, you know, what what, what I saw from my perspective is how many people this fired up about coon hunting and wanting to get back in it. I mean, I saw so many comments just today to this day i posted on youtube and i had somebody comment on there and say man i this makes me want to get another dog i used to hunt with these dogs back in the day you know and this fires me up this wants me to get back into hunting so i just want to say that that, that's what we're trying to do here (laughs) you know that's what we're trying to accomplish and those guys man they they 
because I can't really take any credit for any of that. I mean, I, I bet I said, what, 10 words, you know, and that's kind of the way I like it. All I did was bring the equipment and set it up. But, man, those guys really fired people up. And I didn't know, but uh, the price of wipeout dogs went up a little bit from that. You know, people got fired up about the wipeout dogs too, you know. And, you know, on the other side of that, we we didn't cover uh, a quarter. What did Ferg say? You can't do th- 30 years and 30 minutes. Three, 30 years and three hours. Yeah. yeah. 30 years, 30 minutes. But yeah. I mean, there's so much more that dogs that we didn't cover like old peaches and Willie. I mean, the list goes on Clayton and uh hellbilly and Bob wire and cyclone. Uh, yeah. So, Hey, we may go back one day. We need to. So absolutely hard <laughs> rock, hard rock. Yeah. Well, I, I think one reason that spec, we didn't spec. cover wipe out spec. We didn't cover spec. World champion. One reason that it, that it was as successful as it was is this day and age information is readily available anywhere, but getting it straight out of the horse's mouth is a different story. And a lot of that information you'll find on Facebook and it's, it's a lot of guys that think they know what, what it was, but don't really, you know, they just have an idea and hearing it from the people that were there that done it, experienced it. I think that's one of the things that makes it so special. It it was awesome to hear. I wish there was 10 episodes of it. I think I listened to those three, probably three or four times a piece. Um, I I couldn't get enough of it. Three hours, what wasn't even, I mean, y'all didn't scratch the surface. I mean, it could have been two days long and been fine with me. It could have been two days long. I mean, Really, and and we that was the least edited podcast that I've ever done. The least amount of editing. I mean, those guys knew how they wanted that thing to go. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. They knew it was all I did was push that little record button right there, and hey, they were off to the races. I mean, they 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 were perfect. I mean, and what gets me is like Billy Bell. I believe you could wake him up out of a sleep if he was sleeping between cast. And you asked him about a bloodline that went back to a dog 20 years ago. Billy Bell's got it, you know. And uh, now uh, that was impressive to me because, you know, Billy is, to be so young, he is so knowledgeable of the sport and and his accuracy for bloodlines and everything is awesome also. What was was your favorite wipeout dog you ever hunted with? Overall, all of them you've hunted? Uh, All of them I hunted with was Zeb. you know, you hear stories about different things, you know, kind of like Wipeout, uh, Bigfoot. You know, everybody's seen Bigfoot, and they've got stories to tell about Bigfoot and Panthers and all that stuff. And But uh, I, I was I had the opportunity to hunt with Zeb, and if a fellow didn't like his desire and his ability, and uh, there's a difference between, and I'm no authority by no means, but I've heard about coal trailing. Uh Zeb could take a cold track, but he moved it. Hey, y'all, this is Tyler, your host of Coon Hunting University. I'm here to talk to you about extreme dog fuel. Whether you're looking for a 30-20, 24-20, 26-18, or 22-12, they have any type of food that us coon hunters need. I'd like to issue a thank you to them for making Coon Hunting University podcast possible. So go to extremedogfuel.com and find a retailer near you and give them a try. I love it. I've been blown away. I swapped to the 3020, and I honestly hadn't looked back. I mean, I love it. I really do. And I encourage everyone to go over there to extremedogfuel.com. Check them out. Find a retailer near you. Read all about it. You'll see why I swapped to Extreme Dog Fuel. He didn't piddle with it. He moved it. And that was what was so impressive. And uh, like Barry said, the only time he treats when the coon climb. But he was a good tree dog. I mean, they wasn't no run the two and all that stuff. And uh, but he was my favorite one. He would win today. And uh, Barry's a little got just a tad of gray showing. But if he had another Zeb, uh, there'd be a lot more people remembering who Barry Kitty was. You think they'd have to make a new place at the top of that at the top of that uh, uh, earners? If he put his mind earners? to it, if he put his mind to it, uh, he could make a legitimate run. I know that's a hard deal, and you never know what's going to happen. Somebody asked Clay about that one time, uh, being all time when Rock was, and Clay said, you know, something like uh, a lot of people don't know the hours, the miles, the blacktop, the wading, the breaks, the dens. 
uh, that that is a a serious accomplishment. You never know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty satisfied if Barry had the time and had a zip, uh, he'd probably think about making a run at something. And the way the hunts are, it, it could really be possible. I yeah. mean, it could. I mean, it couldn't. It 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 could be in a year. I mean, yeah. if if you yeah. get, I mean. If you hit them hard, and we just watched Scott win a hundred thousand. Yep, with the wipeout dog. With the wipeout dog, and I'm gonna tell you that uh, semifinal round, that was a shootout. But uh, Echo, he he done a number on it, buddy. That dude was tree and coons. Change looked good. It could have went either way, but now, uh, and, and, put and there's a real possibility that um, Zeb three could take over the reproducer list. Yeah, I mean, it, now I'm not saying it's. But it, 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 it it's a possibility. Sure. You did a great job of filming to the and, and you're narrating the well, we're not gonna talk about the, the one time when Landon <laughs> set you up when the camera wasn't right, but the other time you did a outstanding job and then how you narrated that thing and you man, that was great. I had a big time, but that one kind of throwed me off. I, it wasn't nobody's fault but mine. Uh when you take somebody that don't know what they're doing. And somebody that wants to do something, and you combine it, <laughs> it wasn't good because I wanted to do it, but I just didn't know how to do it. <laughs> and uh, I got phone calls from all over the country. And said, "Hey, we've seen enough of your nose for a while. It's pretty embarrassing." I, I'm glad you can laugh about it, but he was leaning into that phone, talking into it. <laughs> Mr. Eddie, I hated it for. I felt so bad for you. I was texting you the whole time, saying, "Mr. Eddie, you you got to turn that thing around." I don't know what I was even texting Landon's phone because I figured you was on his. And I didn't know what he was laughing about over there at that tree with all that. Now that kind of narrows it down. But it was my fault. But uh, I kind of made a bobble there. But uh, like I said, you get somebody that enjoys it and they don't know what they're doing. Hey, it's me. That's great. So, well, while we're in Adamsville, we stopped by the home of Superior Lights and conduct an interview with Mr. Sam and Jamie Davis. If you're ever in Adamsville, Tennessee, and you get jammed up, Mr. Jamie could probably help you out. He's, he's a pretty good lawyer up there. Uh, criminal defense attorney so uh, i know some of y'all listen to this podcast might need his number uh <laughs> but it was a great interview uh they make the best light in the business i mean there's no no doubt you know and they helped us out you know understand more about that made in america they could almost put a made in tennessee and made in mississippi on that because uh when they explain to us, you know, all their parts are made in America, but I mean, so many of their shops that they use are right there in Adamsville or Carnath, Mississippi, or he used some from products from Louisiana. They're serious about that made in America, and then they're put together right there in their shop. I've I've had nothing but great success with their lights. I I, I have nothing to complain about with with a, a superior light. Well, and and Mr. Sam, I mean, he is a well-educated man. They just just great people. They really are. And you know, his sharing of his uh, knowledge and the technology that he uses was amazing. Even back in the early '80s and '90s, when him and Basil uh, first became real good friends, you know, uh, it's amazing. And he still shares his uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, it's amazing that somebody that's in competition freely gives that much information away and like you know about lights i don't know much about them i've used a bandit light uh when basil started in 84 and then when basil went to heaven i've used superior lights so i've only used two lights in my ever since i graduated to a big light and uh just like chance says uh, they're good lights i'm i'm very impressed with them yeah that's a, that's a pretty big operation they have going on there you know you, you wouldn't think it till you uh till you get there and see the office and see uh all the stuff they have man it's crazy how many and, lights they put out of there and one of one of my favorite parts is now me and tyler know nothing about this except what we heard i was asked to mr sam i said mr sam i said i know you're always looking to the future on the next thing and uh he said well he said, now that you mention it, I do have something in the works. And uh, he wouldn't let me and Tyler know much about it, but we did see a, 
uh, a case or something there that could have been involved in it. But uh, I'd say there's something in the works at Superior Lights as we talk. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, what do you think, Tyler? Did you get that uh, impression? And we felt bad about him not telling us about anything until Jamie said, well, he don't tell me neither. So y'all ain't got to worry. I mean, <laughs> y'all don't feel bad about it. No, we didn't feel, we understand. Uh, yeah, I think maybe they, they might be, I don't know. I just, I have a feeling that there's going to be something, something coming out pretty soon. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't know anything for sure. I have no idea, but. He hinted around, you know, they're working on something possibly, but I, I just, <laughs> that was, that was, that was pretty good. It was, it was a good interview and, uh, had fun, had a lot of good feedback on it. Really did. You know, Absolutely. they, they helped us with the, uh, state hunt and, uh, they're a great, great sponsor of the podcast and just, just great people. They really are. Absolutely. And I enjoyed uh, getting to meet Jamie. I'd talked to him, but I had never met him through the years, but now definitely I had met Mr. Sam and knew Mr. Sam when Basil introduced us many years ago. But uh, that was impressive, too, that Jamie was a lawyer. But uh, he still works right there with his dad. And, you know, Jamie's very dedicated to it, you could tell, their whole family. For sure. So y'all got anything else to add on Superior? We'll move on to the Kevin Cable podcast. Sure. That was kind of a big one. Oh, yeah second biggest for some reason there's a thousand more listeners of part one of the wipeout story than there is a part two i don't know why uh it's because you, you waited so long to release it and everybody just had to listen to what they had several different times no it, it goes individually oh it does yeah yeah there was a thousand individual more listeners to the for part one than there was to part two and there was a lot of listeners part two, you know, so yeah. I mean, that, that kind of tells you, you know, I don't know if people, if you listen to this, there is a part two and three of, of the wipeout story. I don't know if, you know, but, uh, Kevin Cable's interview, big winner, of uh, big hunting dogs. What'd y'all think about it? I enjoyed it. I, I see him on Facebook. See, you know, see his, his success. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Well, I enjoyed it because it was a uh, a very educational podcast to me. I mean, I, I learned a lot. I mean, I'm you know I'm not too proud to say that I, I he taught me a good bit in, in that podcast. He really did. Well, and and he is the things that he has accomplished with his you know how old is he thirty thirty uh, that that's that's saying something. You know, I've been on this world six more years, and I, <laughs> um, I can't come nowhere close to saying all that. Uh, just to add to what you said, Chance, it was the PKC Youth World Championship, the ACHA World Championship, the PKC World Championship, the Truck Shootout. He's won two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, eighth all time on PKC's handler list, and something he added. Uh, he never bragged a bit, but he said, uh, was talking about the rules there. And he said, I've done that winning with a 25 and 50 strike dog. You know, he's, that's part of his dogs. If they bark, uh, I don't want to speak for Kevin. Uh, I don't say that every time they bark, they're smelling a coon, but I'm pretty sure they smelling something. Yeah. You know, I, I have heard of the big money line like everybody else. I mean, you know, I mean, if you, you'd have to be not on Facebook or anything to not hear the big money line, but I did. It was cool to hear the story about them, where they come from. And then not only that, but, uh, how bank was just polar opposite of them. I think that's crazy. And mm -hmm. I know Mr. Eddie, you, you, you kind of got a little soft spot for old bank, huh? Oh yeah, absolutely. He's more, them other things Kevin's got to walk you to death. I mean, they'll, uh, <laughs> They'll treat coons, and, and like he said, you know, uh, there was a difference between big money and little money. And But Bank, uh, he's more my kind of dog. He hunts good, but he kind of starts hunting. But at best I could tell, my kind of dog, you know, he I'd, I'd say he don't pass one up, and he he's a nice dog. i tell you something, you know, uh, out of that, uh, when I asked Kevin, I said, you know, when you first got started, 
uh, I said, uh, how, how did that go? And he said, well, my uncle, uh, James Tyree, helped me a lot. And I said, well, what did he tell you? He said, well, uh, first thing is learn the dog. He said, learn that dog, and uh, everything else will kind of fall in place. He said, and then uh, you start working on them rules, but also uh, you'll uh, learn something, and if something goes wrong, uh, he called it a $25 mistake. Uh, he said, once you experience that, you probably won't forget that one. And uh, so he said, start out, learn the dog, know the dog, then get involved with the rules, and then once you make a mistake, you probably won't make that one twice. I thought that was impressive, you know, about helping kids. And so well, that brings a great point. So, and Kevin mentioned that his wife is uh, big in the youth up there in Indiana, and I figured I'd put a plug in here for uh, two youth hunts they have coming up as well. So you have the Indiana State Champion Youth Hunt, which is April 30th. That's 2022. And it's hosted by Hannah's Creek Conservation Club. That's going to be at 751 West Rutherford Road, Liberty, Indiana, 47353. And you got a 4 p.m. bench show, which will be $5. You have a bench show judge, will be Mr. Scott Houston. 6 p.m., a non-licensed treeing contest, so that will be $5 entry fee. And then 8 p.m., the night hunt, which is one hour, which will be another $5. And I... If I'm not mistaken, he mentioned that this is the UKC. This is the UKC hunt. I'm pretty sure he mentioned that. Uh, I'll have to double check that. But I believe this is the UKC Indiana State Championship. So either way, it's a youth state championship. Just uh, clarify what, what rules you'd be hunting under. You can contact Angie Cable for more information uh, or check out the Coonhunting University Facebook page. We have this flyer posted or she has it posted on hers. And they also have another youth hunt coming up which will be the 2022 Hannah's Creek Youth Championship, which is at the same address. And this will be Saturday, June 4th, 2022. And it's join us at the Creek. It's a UKC bench show for $5 entry fee at 3 p.m., a non-licensed treeing contest at 5 p.m. for $5 entry fee, a squalling contest, which will be free entry fee, and then the UKC licensed night hunt, which will be one hour at 9 p.m., and that is also $5. They're going to have a big basket raffle, free raffle for the kids, free hot dogs, chips, juice for the kids, and lots of prizes. You can contact Angie Cable or Mike Carmack for more information. And I, that flyer is also posted on the Cunard University Facebook page. And if you, you can message me if you have any questions, I can put you in contact with both of those individuals. Thank you all very much. <laughs> you did a good job, my buddy Mike Carmack. I saw his name up there. He's my buddy. Me and him and Basil has been buddies for a long time. And uh, going way back when we had the youngster uh, win the Youth World Championship with our dog, me and Carmack and Basil was partners on that dog. And Carmack helped us on uh, our night. And we just been friends a long time. And uh, What dog was it? Uh, trap. Out of Mike Carmack had the UKC World Champion. He owned him. And then uh, he bred a female and got trap out of uh, his world champion. Uh, Carmack's been doing it a long time too. And uh, <laughs> when I made that big mistake with that uh, camera walking around showing my nose and teeth, me and Carmack laughed about that a little bit. He gave me some pointers on that also. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they got some good help. Right oh, there, yeah, huh? they got some good help. I guarantee you. Carmack's been doing it a long time, and he enjoys it. I guarantee you, he lives right up there by Doug and Junior and all those guys. He enjoys himself. He's a farmer. Well, he used to be a farmer. Uh, he probably doesn't farm as much as he used to. Probably b busy on the uh, being the bank, uh, what do they call those people that uh, the bank gets their suggestions from, uh, the board. Uh, He's probably the board, on the board yeah. of some bank somewhere. Yeah. Yep. So – but I, th I thought of something else Kevin said that really got my attention. I guess everybody knows this, but it's another one of those things people's got to say out loud. He was talking about uh, natural ability born in a dog. He said, now you can't judge that on a dog that a handler's done been involved with. He said in the pups out of a dog, you can't judge that after someone has taught them to 
disappear or whatever. He said, natural ability is what you reproduce. You cannot reproduce man-made uh, dogs. And he said, so what you see out of a man-made dog is nothing of what you will get. You will get the natural stuff. And that made uh, so much sense to me because uh, that's one thing about Old Bank and those uh, dogs and money and little money. Uh, I, I always talk about a dog. Uh, if you ever lose them, the only place don't look for them is where you turned them loose. And that's pretty much the way Kevin's dogs are, the way I've seen them is if you lose one, I can tell you where he won't be. I don't know where he's at, but he won't be where you turned him loose. That's pretty good. That's, that's yeah. And I, I noticed that too. And uh, I think it's impressive that he wins with what he breeds, you know, I mean, he wins with other dogs too. Don't like he said, he does have other dogs that he bought, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, Old bank. there ain't but one other person that I can think of that has owned that has won a world championship with a dog that they owned the dad to, which would be Scott Engel. Hmm. That's the only other person I can think of. Can you think of anybody? I hadn't thought about it. Uh, that very well could be a hundred percent correct, but I'd, I'd have, I'd have to think about that a pretty good while. This 63 year old thing makes me think a little more about that, but I know that what old bank, uh, you know, like I told you, I don't want to wear this out, but I was blessed to get to watch him win the world hunt and uh it, it kind of meant more to kevin just like he said that you know he owned the the dad of that dude and he, he was bred right there at his house and and something else he said i thought was important the reason he can do well with these dogs is he knows so much about them what they can take what they can't take what they're good at and what they're not good at and uh you know, like he will correct one, not as much as he used to, he said. But uh, knowing how much correction a dog can take is a sure big help. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a big help. I, I'm looking for a bank pup still. I have a good bred female, if anybody knows where one is. I'd like a puppy puppy. <laughs> I, I, I want to, I mean, I can't say enough about it. I really enjoyed the interview, and I don't. Honestly, it was probably one of my favorite interviews to do, and I, I didn't knew you know, I didn't think I knew it was going to be good going into it. But I mean, once we got into it, I, I really I really enjoyed it. And man, I've talked with Kevin after that, and he's he's a good dude. He really is. And let me tell you something else that stuck out in my mind. I don't know how old Kevin was when this happened, but do you remember him telling us that he bred his female to Zeb three, and out of that litter, a one year old Super Stakes champion a two-year-old Super Stakes champion, and a three-year-old Super Stakes champion. I mean, who's done that before? You know, that I mean, that, was, that was an amazing statistic right there. It is. I mean, and he's only 30 years old. Sure. I mean, man, I seen he uh, qualified for the Tournament of Champions the other day uh, with a little bit of money. Yeah. And he went got up to the – Got into the finals, Went to he? the – well, yeah, yeah, he went to the finals. Yeah, he got into the top 96 for the – tournament of champions which will be three weeks after this is hell this is recorded or two weeks but you know what was really crazy is he went up there to nationals kevin sprained his ankle because i had called him and i said we were talking he said yeah i am laid up i'm you know sprained my ankle real bad and i ain't been able to go to nationals he went up there for one night with bank one night doubled up and got in oh yeah you know one night you know went for the the last night to get in that that's impressive. You got to watch them coon trayers. They'll get them CWs. I mean, just I tell you something else. Kevin told me that I thought was impressive because when I first started coon hunting, and this ain't about me, but I lost so many casts before I ever come close to winning one. I mean, uh, they're thinking this poor kid's gonna win one after a while. But Kevin, <laughs> at eight years old, uh, he won his first cast, and I believe he won three in a row, maybe four before he ever lost and pretty quickly he won the ukc i mean the pkc youth world championship uh that's that's pretty handy right there and then he had a pretty good list of, of things that he continued on with but you know from a very young age uh not many young eight-year-olds can compete and win four casts in a row at their first hunts once again i think he was listening and paying attention yeah, for sure. I think it's uh, pretty awesome. really is. <clears throat> so, 
anything else y'all want to talk about with Mr. K before we move on? No, I can't think about it, but you could tell uh, just talking to him how much uh, love he has for his wife and his son and how happy he is that they can make a living as a family with these dogs, you know, because he said uh, they kind of work them together. You know, she'll help him with uh, things around the house and and gets to hunt with him when time allows. Yeah, she won the uh, ACHA Ladies Be- World Hunt. Ladies World, yeah, that's and the a world champion bench show. Yeah, well, uh, if you listen to this, Miss Angie uh, or Mrs. Miss Cable, we will we would invite you to the podcast. I know Kevin said you're very shy, but uh, we'd like to have both of y'all back on at the same time. I think that'd be a really cool interview if you know if you can get past the shyness. Okay, so uh, you good, Chance? Oh yeah. Uh, you about half asleep over there. You coming hunting with me, Mr. Eddie, tonight with the invader? I very seriously do. Oh, my God. He, he's something else, ain't he? So, well, before we close this out, this has been a big a debate. And I want to bring it up, Mr. Eddie. You were there. You know, this is like when you watch Jurassic Park for the first time and you, you criticize them folks for them dinosaurs because you was there when you seen them <laughs> things back in the day. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just messing with you but uh are we in the golden age of coon hunting or are we just all you know self-centered people thinking that we're in the golden age now you know uh, my generation i guess you'd say i wasn't there in the 80s i wasn't even born until 1994 so you know well, take it away well I, I may not be the right person to ask that because ever since i was a boy and I got to hear my first dog running tree of coon and heard that dude set up tree and got to go to that tree. Uh, it just kind of pulled me in. I'm 63 years old, and every time I hear a good tree dog tree, uh, it just kind of pulls me in like a magnet. And uh, I, a lot of people have different opinions, you know, about it. But it's been fun for me and still is fun. Uh, the only comment I would make is, I know that our hunting territory, the places we used to get to hunt, uh, is not as much as they was, but uh, so be it. Uh, I think every time we have an opportunity to go coon hunting, share a story with friends, spend a little time talking about the dogs and uh, telling a story or two with a smile, uh, I think it's a blessing from the good Lord that we get to do it. And uh, I don't know when or when not was the golden age. But uh, I'm still having fun, and I think anybody that uh, wants to, there's still a lot of fun out there. Yeah. I think that that was the best way of avoiding <laughs> answering a question I've ever heard of. Um, no, nah, but you know. What, what, what's being said? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so popular podcast host, Mr. Josh McHale, and another ex-popular podcast host, Mr. Steve Fielder. So, Mr. Steve thinks that the golden age was in the late 80s, mid 80s, early 90s. Josh thinks that, uh, and that was because of the numbers and the sure amount of people that we were coon hunting at that time. Josh says that it is today because of the media coverage that we have and the uh, $100,000 hunt, uh, stuff like that that's going on and, uh, the uh and and that's pretty much the gist of it and then everybody on facebook has their own opinion too uh, and i don't i don't really have an opinion you know i i don't because I, I don't know because i wasn't there all right chance tell us what you think i think we have more hunts now i think that contributes to not the the amount of participation that you're having at these hunts too oh yeah I you mean, know i mean you have five hunts within every week within 30 minutes of here it seems like you know i mean or 45 minutes here i mean i think that contributes a lot to your numbers dwindling i'm not necessarily dwindling but giving a false sure a false uh interpretation of the numbers because there's so many good hunts around the country yeah uh why drive five hours when you can drive an hour or two makes sense and make the same amount of money because i mean it is all about the i mean you know why would i drive this far to go do this when i can just drive right over here and pay $2,500 and make the same amount of money, you know? So, I mean, and I... So, what was your question? Are we in the golden age of coon hunting or was the golden age past? 
golden age has passed. Okay. Why do you say that? Because you said coon hunting. The golden age of coon hunting was when furs were outrageously high. That's when people, I, I, because they, it wasn't a hobby. It was a way to live. Well, I would I, call that the golden age. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I know what you're saying, though, yeah. Um, I mean, of hunting, particularly, you know, of coon hunting. Well, yeah. and I ought to, they don't say the golden age of coon. They say the golden age of competition. Came competition. Up. They do yeah. say that when they when they talk about this. So I should rephrase that, the golden age of competition coon hunting. But I could see where the golden age of coon hunting in itself has passed just because of what y'all both mentioned as far as land sure. uh, dwindling and fur prices. So, I mean, as far as a pleasure hunting experience, the golden age might have passed, you know? And, I mean, it's it's passing a lot of pleasure hunters up as far as if you don't breed your own stock and you're a pleasure hunter, you're kind of running out of places to go because everybody's breeding for the what's winning these hunts. And that's not necessarily a pleasurable dog to hunt. Sure. You know? And, you know, I, I'll tell you something else that that I've experienced. It's just like uh, going to a, a hunt and get in a motel room. I ain't got nothing against motel rooms. But if you can uh, rent a house like we've done that a few times and a group of people that are friends get together and everybody's got a different story to tell and probably somebody enjoys cooking and somebody knows how to wash dishes and the camaraderie of going to a coon hunt by staying at a house instead of a motel room with a group of people. We, uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a big deal. I, I bet Landon was the cook and dishwasher, correct? Uh, that'd be a no. <laughs> well, he me, did cook one, one house we stayed at. He did cook the steaks. Now I, I got to tell that. Uh, what, what, what has died though is the club atmosphere. Sure. You know, and, and Billy Dwyer and Mr. Steve had a great podcast on that. Talking about that as far as, and you were there. He mentioned you back when they had, I guess, their club at Pearl River. You know, oh, yeah. He said that y'all used to come over there and they'd go to the social sure. club. Go early. Stay late. Yeah, and that has died. And I, I hate to see, you know, you see it a little bit more UKC side, but it still isn't isn't like it used to be. I remember that. Now, sure. I remember showing up to the clubs early and everybody had the dogs tied to the tailgates. and Kind of like a youth hunt. Yeah, it is. Just, <laughs> it's kind of like a youth hunt bringing back those days, just like the Nationals. You know, me and Michael and Braxton and Brandon, we stayed together at the Nationals. And I'll tell you what, them folks from that Braxton and Brandon are cooks, and I would be the dishwasher. But I'm telling you, uh, it just adds something to the hunt. And that may be a thought people might want to start doing to have a little more fun. Is a little more fellowship. A little more fellowship, fellowship. because we did it. We, uh, we, we just had a big time. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, and I even asked you, I said, what about like at the national stuff? Do people sit around and talk? He said, no, not, not, not particularly. Do they? No, they still show up by deadline, even though they're staying in a hotel. I don't, that's something that's, that's really disappeared. Yeah. You know, and I hate to see that. I really do. Cause I mean, it's so much fun. And I think everybody enjoys doing it, you yeah. know, for the most part. I mean, everybody, you know, sit around and tell good stories and, you know, I mean, I hate to see that part of it dying. I will say that that has. My wife and I was talking about the youth hunt, and that was one of the things that I enjoy about it is getting to see people that you don't get to see all the time. Sure. And and sitting there and talking, just having a good time. And it's really, I mean, now don't get me wrong, it's stress, stressful on us. But it's not stressful. It's not a stressful atmosphere um because you're not having to worry about hunting you're not having to worry about doing anything um now don't get me wrong we got to get judges and guides and sure all that together but but other than that you're not worried about competing in yourself well and and something about i'm sure that uh this louisiana state hunt is going to learn the meetings you have you know y'all know this for a fact the meetings we have on the way to the big day we have a meal together we have a prayer together. We shoot the bull for a while, tell stories, catch up. Then we get down to a meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all. Speaking fun. of, we, we've got to have a, a, a after hunt meeting. Uh, meeting, eating meeting. Yep, that's our plans. We're going to all get together and have a cookout and, and have a big time and talk about what we need to do, what we did do, and uh, the future. Good Lord we willing, might, year 10. We might want to sit back and... 
Watch these so guys. After May 28th, that way, we, oh, yeah. we, when we have our meeting, we can take a little bit from them, man. They're doing a great job. And like always, I thank y'all for coming on here and thank y'all for coming over to the house and uh, hope y'all enjoyed our studio for right now. Oh, it yeah. It ain't going to be too much longer. We won't have it. And we're fixing to go turn the new dog loose. We're going to uh, go turn Invader loose. We're going to see if we can invade some Chance's hunting club. Yep. Well, I sure enjoyed it, Tyler. Enjoyed it. Chance. Oh, yeah. We enjoyed it. It was great. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHUPODCAST at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.